Uh, I go by JMO. Um, I am a the programming manager at Shipple, and I work with the programming team that helped develop Tendency software. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about building smart websites and how you can do that in a number of different tools, specifically Tendency, WordPress, and Drupal. Um, so to start out, um, I want to establish a little bit of credibility. I've built websites. Um, I started building websites back in my college dorm um, in early 2005. I uh, worked on a actually large student organization site that had uh, weekly events of 40 to 60 members three times a week. Um, so we built software for that in ASP. I learned a lot about usability and how people wouldn't use your software. They would call you on the phone, and that made you want to build better software. Uh, at the same time, I started blogging on WordPress. Um, it was more like tweets at the time. I didn't really understand the, the concept of writing lengthy blog posts. And learned eventually how to start editing a theme, changing a template. Maybe I want to move this picture over here. Uh, and you start out small and you build into, into some of the things that I'll be able to show you today. Um, and kind of moving forward in working with Shipple, I've been able to work with some great developers and programmers in building tendency software. It's built on Django, which is a, an open source platform that utilizes Python. Uh, if you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, it's kind of the similar, except it's in Python. Uh, so copy and paste is long gone. Uh, the first website that I worked on, the way that you would update the home page is you would download the home page and type in changes and re-upload the home page. Uh, if you wanted to change a navigation item, you'd had to download all the pages and do kind of a find and replace on all your files, click save, send it back up. If you're still doing your website this way today, you're not doing it right. Um, you need to upgrade to something newer. Um, it, was, it was very error prone. It was very uh, time tasking. It was something that I'd have to go home because that had my FTP credentials and I'd have to log into this computer and I couldn't do it on the fly. And um, now I can update our production servers from my iPhone. So the, the kind of the distance that we've come is, is pretty tremendous. Um, and kind of a, along with that, uh, includes are a little bit better. So one of the things that I'll show today, and you, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed in, in the majority of websites, we basically have four areas. We've got a big box at the top we call the header. We've got uh, a sidebar, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right, sometimes on both sides, column. We've got a kind of a rectangle at the bottom called a footer. And then the, the missing piece, the big rectangle, the, big, the meat of the sandwich, we call a content area. Uh, so those four pieces are pretty standard across the majority of websites you see today. The content area is the thing that changes when you go to new pages, uh, typically. And the, the header, the sidebar, the footer almost always remain the same or very similar. So those areas are areas where includes in the past were something that you could take advantage of. We could write specific code, and what it would do is, is we'd be able to say, okay, this is our navigation file, and we want to pull that in. Um, we still use a bit of that today in a lot of software, but we're able to take it even further. So let's talk about getting smart. Um, when I say a smart website, what I really am talking about is a, a dynamic website. A dynamic website is something where I can enter content once and have it show up in multiple places. Um, I'll use the example of a, uh, a, a ca an event, an event that your organization is hosting. And maybe you need to update the title, something seemingly simple. Well, chances are, if you've got a if you've got events, you probably have a calendar page. Now, in the old days, you'd have to go to the calendar page, change the title there. You probably have a page for that event specifically that people could go to. Maybe they can register, they can sign up, they can learn about locations, um, where things are happening. That page needs the title update as well. Um, if you're smart enough right now to pull that information into your home page because maybe it's an upcoming event, it's a featured event, it's something that you want showcased to the majority of your visitors, you have to make that update there as well. So events is a, is a great use case for trying to get smart with your website. Um, so I'm going to escape out of the slides and jump into demo. Uh, now this is kind of a, a uh, live demo. It's actually running on my local machine. So for the nerds out there, I spin up a server. And this means that I can refresh what looks like a website and it won't ever crash because it's not actually connected to the internet. So this will look like the shipple.com site. And what, kind of one of the things that I want to focus on is, is some of the areas that we are smart with our website, um, areas that we can generate basic content and um, have everything go.
Oh, well. What? <laughs> it is the rule of the live demo. We, we joke because uh, in, in, inside our company, we give live demos every Monday. We have a meeting every Monday, and every Monday, you end up doing a live demo. Um, so I'm going to actually skip ahead. I'll come back to the tendency stuff, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about WordPress. Um, so who in here uses WordPress for their site, manages their site on WordPress? A few people. So WordPress gives you some, some functionality where you can do some different things. Um, this is a client of ours, uh, Siraj Marketing and Research. And one of the things to kind of highlight on this page is, you see how everything is, is purple on this page? We've got purple links. We've got purple headers. Um, we've got a purple navigation. We've even got this special purple logo. This is all using a, a specialized template. And what they're able to do with this site is they can apply a certain category to this page and say, this page is a healthcare page. Um, in the back end, we create a healthcare template. Now, what this allows us to do is, instead of on this page, the old way of doing this would be, OK, I need to remember healthcare is purple, and the purple special color we use is this version of purple, and I need to always remember to change all the color of everything to purple. Instead of that, we have uh, a couple lines in our style sheet. We have a special template for this. We apply this to this page because of a category. And that's all done when we add this, uh, this page or this blog post. The normal process, I check one box, and automatically everything on the page turns purple. Um, if I click around to another one, it turns green, uh, it turns orange. Um, and so what, what this gives you the kind of the flexibility to do, and the reason this isn't just smart in the, in the near term, because it's easy to make updates. If I needed to add another healthcare page, well, I don't have to repeat the whole process of making this purple again and doing all this other stuff over again. Uh, instead of doing that, I can simply apply that category again. And it's very simple to do. Um, now, taking it even further in kind of the long-term sense of your website, let's say one day you decide you're going to upgrade your website from one platform to another. Maybe you're going to do a, a major WordPress upgrade. Um, maybe you decide for some reason that purple is not the in color anymore, and now it's pink. Well, we've got all this purple content on our site that we're not able to load up and show anything on. And that would be kind of frustrating to have to go in and, OK, now I have to go remember where everything was purple, find it, comb through it, re-highlight it, change it to the new pink color that we're using. Uh, and this becomes a content management nightmare. So if in the future we decide we want to do that with the templates and with nice style sheets, we can change everywhere the color's purple, that may be three or four places, we change that to pink, and boom, our entire website is updated. We didn't have to look through any of our pages. We can trust it. Um, we can actually search and just find those pages that have that category. Because we know already those are the pages that we intend to be the purple pages. Um, one of the ways um, you can also kind of get a little further into tweaking, um, how many of y'all use sticky posts on your WordPress site? So sticky posts, kind of the history within that is in forums. And when you make something sticky, kind of like you, you pin it to a wall and it sits at the top of a list. Um, I don't really have that need for, my, for that on my personal blog. I don't have any kind of announcements or anything like that that would need to sit at the top. But I did want a way to mark things as favorites. Um, I might have a, a certain blog post, and I don't want to necessarily create a category of favorites because that throws off my SEO and some other things. Uh, so instead, I can use sticky to make favorites. Um, so uh, this is uh, just a page out of my blog, and you'll see these little red asterisks next to a couple of the posts. Um, and all I did is I tagged that post as sticky. And I added a little bit of code to my template that says, if this post is sticky, put a little red asterisk here uh, and link it to a certain page, a list of favorites. Um, and what it does is it, is it links over to this tab. So you'll see this page, because it's my favorite page, I can be smart again. I don't need to show you a bunch of red asterisks. You already know you're on the favorites page. So what we're able to do is we're able to take a, a goal, a mission of, I want some method of making this specific content featured. I want a method of, of separating this from something else in a way that is different from categories or tags or the other ways you can do that stuff. Uh, and we use something like Sticky is a, is a case for here. Um, and then I can take that and put it in all sorts of places. Um, I can even do, and we'll see if uh, the search is working. Actually, I'll do that in the URL. So what this is going to do is, is take me to a 404 page. Um, you'll see there's nothing. But what I've done again is I pulled in all my favorite posts on the 404 page so that people could find that. Um, so not to say you should do this with your blog, but more to say that if you did have some kind of, you know, here are the top 10 pages that our users usually go to, that our visitors go to, things that we want to show off. Um, we can embed that information and do it in different places. 
Um, so WordPress is a little more technical to do that. Um, there's not a whole lot of plugins that will do this out of the box. And, and the biggest reason for that is that when you're trying to get smart with, with your website, it's with your goals and your needs. And that's when you start to kind of break away from the generalities of, of what a content management system does. Um, with WordPress specifically, you're probably using posts, you're probably using pages, you may have a couple other plugins if you're using the new post types. Um, but generally, you're not going to go outside of those bounds too far within the software. Um, fortunately, these software, the open source tools, you can go and download the source. Um, you can hire a consultant to help you accomplish some of these things. Um, and you can kind of get involved in the community and say, here's this tiny thing, this tiny change I want to make to my site. Can you, can you help me to make that? Um, from personal experience doing that, it's also helped me to learn how to do lots of things. Um, in this case, I learned how to make something sticky, and then I learned, oh, well, I can do some other things while I'm doing this, and I can print out, um, maybe I have a category description that I want to show in a certain place, or maybe I have a special way I want to format my dates. Maybe I have um, some special language. I want to print out my Creative Commons license next to my blog post and have a mechanism for uh, doing that. So you can slowly start to kind of expand on that. Um, there's a couple other things you can do with custom fields, if anyone's familiar with those inside of WordPress. Um, it looks like the Wi-Fi is working, so I can I have a, a list of shared links, um, and this was kind of predates the actual having a link content type. But this goes outside of my site, so I put the little arrow there to kind of signify that. But this was done inside the template, and all I look for is a category. I say if this has the category shared, then instead of linking to my blog and letting you read more about it, I want to go send you to what I'm sharing. Um, it, it kind of is similar to Tumblr if you've used that content management system. It does functions that way. So I was able to take that functionality, that mission, and convert it using the software. Um, uh, another aspect, and I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit and talk some about Drupal. Uh, who in this company? Drupal? Anyone on Drupal? A couple people. So um, Drupal has a, a, another fantastic module that I really like called Context. Um, and this is something, and, and the technology in this is really quite amazing, but the fundamentals behind it are really kind of what I want y'all to get out of this portion. What a context, what a context is, is, is I have some trigger or some condition. When this happens, I want something else to happen. I want a result to happen. When I am on a page of this type, I need something to show up. When, um, and, and the example is, I'm going to jump to a, there's actually a great blog post um, I'll be sure to link it um, when the slides come out, link it in the slide deck, uh, using Drupal context module. And it talks a lot about the different things you can do with it. Um, but this blog post is an example in itself of how context is used. So this is an article submitted by a guy named Sean Price. Um, and normally, we would just get this middle information, and the sidebar wouldn't be so fancy. But because this site is using context module, it's able to say, OK, we know Sean Price is a user in the, thing, in the system. We have this other area where people can upload photos. Uh, maybe they can tag photos, or they can do something where they can say, this is a photo of Sean Price. They have a way of doing that. And what context lets you do is connect those two. So this picture over here on the right shows up because the software knows this article is by Sean Price, and Sean Price has a photo inside the software. So if we're viewing an article, or a blog post, and if that author has a picture in our database, then we want to show that picture inside the sidebar. So we've got our if. If this happens, we want a result. We have a, a, a condition, and then we have a reaction. Um, the other thing you'll kind of notice is we've got more posts by Sean. Um, some of the kind of cool things you can do with the context module specifically is you can list out, um, or you can set defaults. So let's say we, we pull up a new author. This is their very first blog post. How disappointing would it be to say, more posts by Sean, and then it's like an empty list? You know, that, that's an area where um, your theoretical smart software now has a, an emotional effect on someone. And that's something you, you definitely want to avoid. So with the context module, you can set a default. And you can say, if this and if Sean has two or more posts, show the posts. Otherwise, let's just show the latest. We'll fill that area. It'll look the same to anyone browsing the site. And now we're not hurting Sean's feelings and discouraging someone that created new content on our site. Um, we can actually do a lot more with this. And, and kind of in the same aspect as with the Siraj site, where we saw 
we've got the purple here on this page. I can go to energy and everything changes to green. And now it's a green logo and green links. Um, instead of that happening, we can do the same thing with the context module in Drupal. Um, there's a, a ton of options when you start to think about your organization. And I think part of the problem is people aren't as aware of this kind of technology that we can do these things. Um, kind of a, an asterisk there, it does take some configuration. It's not going to magically, you, you can't talk to it like the new iPhone and say, automatically show pictures in the sidebar when this happens and it'll work. Um, but these things can be set up, and in the long run, they can save you a ton of time in administering your content, not having to go back in and, and fill in loose gaps. Uh, but the kind of the main thing I wanted to focus on today uh, is tenancy. So I'm going to jump back to web.com, cross my fingers, and we'll see what it looks like. So here is our home page. Um, one of the kind of cool aspects of our home page is the bulk of it is dynamic content. Um, we don't have someone that goes in and updates the home page by actually going to a home page file and making changes. Um, I'm going to swipe over and show you. This is the home page with all the content, the dynamic content areas blocked out. Um, you'll see our navigation is pretty consistent. Our, our phone number doesn't change. It's not dynamic. Um, although you could do that if you had one of those services where in different locations. Um, we've got our services in the middle. We've got a, a small blurb of text. Um, and then we have a few links in the bottom and, and similar kind of navigation in the footer. Um, the only reason this area isn't dynamic is because we only change it once a year. It's every year. Um, so you can see that we have a very lively home page. Lots of content on there, lots of things that are filled in. Um, but we don't have to do that much with administration. Um, one of the kind of other great aspects is that we can, we can do things with external content. So over here in the sidebar, this is from our blog. Um, these links go to blog.shipple.com. We have photos set up in our blog, and I'll, I'll actually pop that open in another tab. So this is our blog. This is the, the blog post announcing Memo and Megan Dries speaking tomorrow. And I'm actually going to jump to the home page and show you that each one of our home pages, we have a special function that says we want to assign a special image to this blog post. This blog post has a featured image. Um, and you'll see the featured image shows up here. We get it in little sections over here. Now we're able to take that information and grab it from WordPress's RSS feed because we're using a technology that knows it wants to talk with other technologies, knows it wants to integrate with RSS feed readers and things of that nature. This information gets stored in that RSS feed. Well, Tenancy inside its template can be aware of that RSS feed, can go grab it, and, and we can say, we want to take the, maybe we want to take the first three. We want to grab those. And we want to show the image. We want to show it here on the left. We want to put the author byline and put their name in caps. We, we can get pretty fancy with all the things that we have to do. Now, the beauty of this, again, is when Katie pushes out a new blog post, she doesn't have to rush over and log into Shipple.com and add it there. So not only are we creating content and showing it in, in more than one place on one site, we're doing that between sites. Um, in theory, you can, you can also do this with other sites that are not necessarily your domain. Uh, maybe you, you have kind of a, um, some recent news or news from our corporate headquarters or, or news from related partners that you want to put in on your site. And, and the, the big benefit to this is that your site is getting dynamic content, which is very important to the search engines. Um, your site is getting updated. Your site looks fresh and it looks new when people come and visit it. It doesn't look like a stale old HTML homepage because that's not what it is anymore. Um, We've also got some kind of powerful areas. We, we feature uh, people at our company here in the center area. Um, and we, we do this uh, with a degree of randomness. So we have a special function that we can say, I can just say, make these random. And what will happen is every five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever we decide, we can configure it and say, OK, we want this to be random. It does that. Um, as you saw with the blog post, again, we have the flexibility of showing an image if they have an image. Um, we can pull in their name. We can pull in details about them. We can link that information out to other places of the site. Uh, we can do the same with the quotes that we have here. Uh, you'll see we're pulling in tweets. This is a, a pretty common thing to a, a lot of softwares, but um, Tenancy has it built right in. So you can uh, plug in your Twitter URL uh, or Twitter name, and it'll pull your tweets into the template. Uh, and then we can do it with photos. Um, now, one of the kind of additional things, and I'll, I'm going to jump back up top because I think it's a larger, prettier picture, we're able to resize images. Um, who, who in here has ever had to 
crop an image to fit a content area that was 846 by 253 and it's got to meet these standards. So with Tendency, we have powerful tools to do that. Um, Drupal has a tool called Image Cache that allows you to do this. And what you do is you set up special configurations and you say, this area on my home page, I know this big area is 1,000 by 500. It's a big giant image. But I don't want my image squished because that's going to look ugly. Um, I don't want my image completely zoomed in because then I might get uh, sometimes a, an awkward, we, we did one with a, a basketball once and didn't, ha didn't have zoom configured properly. And it was like all lopped off. It didn't look like a basketball. Um, you get images where you have an up and down image and it, it cuts off someone's head. That's not what you want to show on your website. So you're able to do special kind of cropping and things and say, you know, we want it to fit these bounds. That's image cache in Drupal and it's built into Tendency. Um, and so Tendency, all we have to do here is we can upload the biggest image we want uh, or we can upload one that's specifically fit to the size. It'll crop it, change it, and it's not something that we have to worry about anymore. So we're getting smarter with our web design. We're getting smarter with our content management. We don't have to think as hard about how we're going to administer that kind of content. Uh, now in the slides, I, I talked some, um, and I guess you all haven't seen th these slides, I talked some about creating a plan. So one of the problems that's kind of inherent and in a way where we don't, can become not as smart is if this was our plan and I have a, a new intern, a new hire, and I say, hey, we, we had this new case study that we wrote. We've got the pictures. We've got all this. Can you add that to the website and put it on the home page? Well, they can say, well, I, I've probably figured out how to add it. I, I may not know exactly how to get to the home page. Um, there's not a special button that says go on the home page um, because that's not something that we would need for all of our clients. You know, we have kind of a, a better, easier way of doing that kind of stuff. So what we would do is we would create a plan. Um, so I've got another image, and this is, this is our plan for how our homepage works. Up here we have three stories with the tag header. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple to remember, but we don't have to remember it because we have a plan for it. We have a document that we can share with interns within the company and say, if you want to make a change and have it do this, this is how this is done. Um, I can scroll down and you can see all the different areas. These are 4K studies. They're tagged rotator because they're in a rotator. Um, we've got two special over here, and then we have this kind of unique change. So the first one shows an image. Um, Tendency and uh, I believe Drupal give you the power to say, we want to grab five of these. If you're the first one of these, we want to make your title bigger and we want to grab a snippet and we want to make it look professional. We want to make it look pretty, but we don't want it taking up too much room on the home page. So the rest of them kind of collapse those down. Um, you'll see we've got one more link down here. It's kind of grayed out. Um, but maybe we want to say, you know, for the rest of them, just, just show the link. We don't need to get too fancy with it. So we're able to take designs that we may have and ideas and, and kind of design constraints and mold the software to fix those. So instead, we don't have to go back and tell our designer, well, couldn't get it to do that. Can you just make them all titles or can you, can you make it less intelligent? Um, here we've got the, uh, an upcoming event. Uh, of the type speaking because it's listed under our public speaking events. Um, we've got it flexible enough to say if there's no upcoming public speaking events, we don't need to show that. We don't need to show this whole area actually because um, we can check. We can check and see. Uh, we get blog posts coming in from outside sites. Um, this actually is, is something that uh, I think is kind of interesting because I configured this and I don't know if anyone even knows it's done this way, but our got questions uh, solely features our salespeople because they're the people that are most likely to want to answer questions that are fantastic at communicating with current clients or potential clients. They're able to, to reach out and uh, maybe a little more well-versed on the phone than, say, a programmer would be in the middle of the day. Um, so we feature our salespeople because they're the people that, that need and want to be featured. Um, we've got a, a, a quote that's random and, and several other things. Um, so this is pretty smart stuff. This is pretty dynamic, um, but it gets even better than this. And that's what I'm really excited to show. So this is, this is our homepage, and this is a pretty typical example of how things, how we'd want to get things to be fancy. But it's harder to think of, well, what kind of dynamic stuff do I want inside of my website? How, how would I ever use that? Does that even make sense? So we're able to do that in tendency with tags. Uh, and so this is our Drupal page, um, Drupal Development Services. Um, one of the things you'll note is we've got some screenshots. This is nice. We've got um, standard text and things. Um, again, we've got our salesperson. Now, 
Beyond that, this again is the, the content area. This is the big header up at the top. Um, take a look at our sidebar. We've got more from Drupal. Well, how did it know this page is about Drupal? Isn't that kind of fancy? We have a mini nav that is solely dedicated to all the pages that are tagged with Drupal, that are concerned with Drupal content. Um, so we're able to use a tag to control that and say, we want to pull in a special navigation on this page. And we can do that with administering this content itself. Um, down on the sidebar to show off uh, some of the case studies that we've done, we can say our, our Drupal works. And we can run a special search and say, we only want to pull down the things that are Drupal related. Because it might not make sense if we had our Drupal page and then we had some random case studies and half of them were WordPress. That might kind of send a mixed message to a potential client or someone coming to the website. Um, if we wanted to, we could specify, we, we've got a specific person in sales that is totally dedicated to, to working with potential Drupal clients and answering their questions. And we want them to be the only person in there. We want to override our default, which is a random staff person. And we want to say, we just want this specific person in here. And then at the very bottom of the page, we have a contact form. So you're on the page, you want some more information, we give you the option to enter that in. Um, and it is specific for content management systems. It's a specific form on our site we were able to create and say, we only want this form to show on these certain pages. Now, because I'm logged in as a, uh, an administrator, um, you can see these tags in the bottom. So I've got uh, case studies, and you see that pound sign there, and that's, the, that's kind of our methodology for determining this is going to pull in some extra information. Um, we've got forms, and we want to pull in a specific form. We want to pull in form number eight, because we know that's the form that has to do with this. And then we've got pages in Drupal, and that's going to pull in this specific menu up here. Um, one of the kind of extra special things we can do with that, I'm going to edit this. Um, and what we can do is we, can, we have a couple more options, a couple different areas. Now, these areas were all created when our template was built, when our site was constructed. But they were all born out of our planning of here's the areas that we want to have specific. Um, so this is something that, you know, if, you're, if your template doesn't do this now, it may be something you can add in. But it's definitely worth thinking about and kind of getting the wheels turning in your head of, well, what does our site need? Where do we need to pull in information? Um, we've got an additional option. I can pull in photos. And I can pull in photos that have been tagged, let's say, 2001. And I'm using that because I know there's some photos tagged 2001. We can pull in photos into a specific area on the page, just like we're pulling in these pages, just like we're pulling in our featured case studies. And they pull into the top. So we're able to inject them into what looks like the content. We're not just restricted by our header. We're not just restricted by our sidebar. Um, we can totally integrate with the content area as well to get stuff inserted to there. So, you know, if you're trying to think smart about your website, you really have to start with the goals of what are the related pieces of content that I would want to do? What are the areas where I have this up here and it's, and you know, we want to pull photos into this because we know that that brings in more excitement. Maybe we have um, events and we want to pull in photos from this event last year. You know, how cool would that be? We don't have to edit that page. We don't have to set any of that up. All we have to do is add a tag. Um, and, and, and even if we, you know, we haven't configured the software to do that initially, what we can do is we can add a little bit in the template and say, I want to grab a list of photos. We'll grab six photos. Um, I want to display them here, and only if they're tagged in a certain way. We can do that. Uh, now, the other advantage to this is that it works on the flip side as well. So right now, what I've shown you is I'm on this Drupal page, and I'm able to tweak the content around it. I'm able to tweak these photos at the top. I've got the sidebar stuff on the side and these case studies. Um, but by knowing that I've tagged that with Drupal, I now also know how to get new stuff into that area. I know that if I go to one of my case studies and I add a new case study and it's a Drupal case study, that I can tag it with the word Drupal. So I can come to any one of these Drupal pages and see, well, well if I'm administering this, well, what's the tag again? Oh, yeah, it's, it's called it's pound Drupal, case studies pound Drupal. I'll add that to the page. I'll add Drupal to that case study, and it'll work that way. Um, I'm going to show a little bit of the code, and only because I think it's something that most people can grasp. You don't need to be a programmer to understand um, how kind of these, these little tiny loops work. 
So what I'm going to do, and, and here's an example of the, let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. So um, is anyone in here a programmer or developer? Someone? Okay. Okay, cool. Well, we got more than I expected. Um, so we've got four loops, right? So I, I want to pull a list of case studies up here. I want to give it a name, call it CS list. Uh, I'm going to grab four that are tagged with this home middle. And I want to say pull random ones. The reason I pull random ones is if I end up tagging eight or nine of them, um, I may not want, you know, I may not want just the newest ones to show. I may want to get a little more variety. Um, we've got one quote pulling into the home page, and I think we've got about 1,300 in the database. So pulling a random one makes a lot more sense than just showing the newest one. So for each one in that, I want to, I want to do this, I want to have this specific code, this specific layout. I'm going to put it in this little list, uh, and then I'm going to do some special stuff for the image. I'm going to change the size of it, and I'm going to make it uh, 200, 230 by 160. That's the little screenshot that you'll see. And I'll actually, let me pull up in another tab to show you what this is doing. So this is this area right here, this featured work, big picture at the top. And, and all we're doing is, is some specific things. So I upload an image uh, screenshots, and I just want to grab the first one. So I can say, if it's the, is, if, in this case, it's for loop that first. If this is the first one, show this information. Otherwise, don't do anything. Um, what makes this really nice is that when I go to one of these uh, case studies, I can have 10, 20, 3, or 4 different uh, screenshots of the software. You can see here we've got multiple screenshots, but I don't want all those pulling into the home page. I just want the first one. Um, when I edit this case study, I'm able to drag and drop those photos. So if I decide I want one of the other ones to be the featured one, I can grab it, drag it up to the top, because I know the first one's going to go in there. So then we do some, some similar work for the images. But, but uh, essentially, all, all we're doing is, is kind of mentally the same way that you would think about it. If I want to pull in three articles, I know it's an article. I know there's three of them. If I want a specific tag, I can say tags equal, and then I can say the tags. Uh, and then I want to do something for each one of those. I want to show the title. I want to show where it is in the content. Um, so for instance, on the, uh, in the sidebar here, um, and this is a good example. So uh, this is our tendency work, because this page has been tagged with tendency, because it is a, uh, another tendency client. Um, for the first one, I can pull in this big area. Um, and then for the other ones, I can just list them out. Um, you'll notice, too, I've got two of these sections. So not only am I flexible enough to just pull in one bit, and I'm restricted to that, uh, if I write my code correctly, I have the flexibility to add as many of these areas as I want. Um, so you can get really detailed with, with that. So we've got web development work, we've got web work, we've got tendency. All that stuff is pulled into our sidebar on this page. Um, you can see here, uh, one of the other aspects of this is a, a story. I don't know if I've talked about stories specifically. A story in, in tendency software, and it's, it's something that's common in other softwares, but I don't know if it's always named the same, is a title, a bit of text, a photo, and a link. Now, with a title, a bit of text, a photo, and a link, you can do a whole lot. Um, if I go to the home page, almost all of these areas that are accomplished by specialized things could be done with a story. Um, I've got a photo, I've got a title, and I've got a link that goes somewhere. This one's a little fancier. With these blog posts, I've got a photo, I've got a title, I've got a link. If I didn't want the author name or didn't want that other information, I could accomplish that with a story. Um, a good majority of tendency sites use stories in multiple places across the page. Um, in Aaron's earlier talk that he gave during the lunchtime, uh, he made mention that a lot of nonprofits and associations need sponsors. Sponsors is a perfect case, uh, perfect case to use stories. Your sponsor is going to want their image, they're going to want the name of their company, and they're going to want it linked somewhere. And so in the back end, if you get a new sponsor, all you have to do is, is go add that in one place. And now your sponsor can be featured on your home page. Your sponsor can be automatically rotated into your sidebar. Maybe you have a, the random that we showed, the random tag. So maybe we want to show two sponsors randomly, but we may have 12 or 13. So we don't want it to clutter up our page, but at the same time, we don't want to have to manually manage, OK, these guys were the first one this month, so next month we're going to have to move them to slot 7 and rotate the bunch up. That's dumb. We want to get smart. Um, do you all have any specific questions on any kind of this, any stuff that you'd like me to show? I know I didn't get too detailed with the code, but...
Oh, in, uh, in tendency specifically? Sure. Um, so I can jump in here to the dashboard. And what I'm going to see here is a, a list of icons. These are the different icons that are going to allow me to uh, add different areas, different pieces of content. Um, if I wanted to add a story, um, I could click on stories. There we go. I could click on stories, and you'll see on that form, um, um, I get the list view. So right now I have the list of stories. Uh, one of the other kind of updates we made is, is tweaks to how these templates work. For any current tendency clients, um, you'll note this looks a little bit different for you guys. Um, immediately, because I'm an admin, I get a ton of information from just staring at this. I get the photo, and it's nicely resized and cropped, probably much bigger than that. But here on this page, it doesn't need to be. Uh, I get my title, and I get my information that I want. This is where that link goes. Um, I see the tags that have been applied to this, and that helps me allow when I am adding things to different areas of the site. Oh, you know, did we have a Facebook section? What were the stories with that? I can come in here, click on Facebook, and pull all those up. Um, I also, down here, because I'm an editor, I get this specialized information. Um, this, is, this is something that we found, uh, we got a lot of feedback from customers that they were having difficulty where they were logged into their site as administrators, adding stuff all day, having, not really remembering or having no idea that their stuff was still marked as private, that someone had marked it private, someone had unchecked the box in the permission settings, and now no one else was seeing their stuff, but they thought you know, their homepage looked populated to them because they're logged in, looked empty to other people, and they, were, they weren't aware of that. Uh, that was very frustrating. So one of the things we've, we've done is we've added in these contextual indicators of, is this publicly viewable, or is it only for admins, or only for members? Um, is it active, or is it something like in this case, it's expired? Um, I can see what time it expired on. Um, I can see that this one's going to expire in a couple days. Um, so we can see all these when these expired. Uh, if I click on any of these tags, and I'm, I'll try to find one that'll pull up something else. If I click on Texas, we'll see here all the stories that have been tagged Texas. So again, immediately I'm able to get access to that content. If I want to add a story, click the add link. And from the ad page, I'm basically given those fields with a couple of different extras. Uh, and I'll show you all once the page loads. Um, one of the kind of the cool things about it, if you do Tendency 4, you would add your story and then add your photo later. Right now, it's, it's all on one page. Um, do we have any Tendency 4 clients, current Tendency clients? Right. So one of the other things is in event administration, um, one of the, the issues that you would see is that to add an event, event can be pretty complex things. You've got different pricing. You have different permissions. We want different people to see certain things. We want to add speakers and be able to update those. Um, so the story here just has some simple fields. We've got our title. We've got our, our content. We can add HTML to this, but we don't have to. Um, if we add a link, the software is smart enough to, to know that's a link and properly link it. Um, but we can get kind of fancy if we want to do strong and bold. Um, but the benefit to this is that we don't have um, the big WYSIWYG that um, as a programmer is something that I see, it, it slows down the page, it, it adds additional resources. Um, usually for these stories, it's just like at the top, it's just a snippet of content, a little description. Um, we can pick our photo, add our link, and then down here we can add our tags. Um, we can choose when the start time is. We're going to start this today. Uh, we're going to automatically end it two weeks from now, but you're free to change any of that. Um, and then we can actually decide, you know what, this is going to be a permanent story. A lot of people run their home page where they'll, they'll add kind of a featured content thing. It'll be in a rotator. And it's not something that they're going to change every week, not really something that they necessarily want to expire. So we can uncheck that. And we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, one of the other kind of advancements specifically to tenancy, and this gets into the reason why before we saw that we had that public and active or public and expired, is we have these uh, advanced permissions. So I can uncheck this public box. And I can see a full list of the different permissions I can apply to people. Let me zoom this in. So I can say, you know, if someone is a, a user, someone's logged into the site, I can say they can view this. Meaning anyone that isn't logged into my site cannot view this. This is great if you want to show special content to members. Uh, this is also great in being smart. So one of the things we can do is maybe we have a special member navigation. We have special, you know, specialized member links, member links only. We can put those inside a list. We can tag pages as that. And then on that, we can, we can check a box and say, only members can view this special area. So when someone logs into the site, if they are logged in, they'll see those links. If they're not logged in, they won't. 
Um, we can do the same for members, if someone's a paying member of our site, if they've joined our site. Uh, and we can even get real nitty gritty with different types of members in different areas, people that are of a certain type of group. Um, maybe we have our San Francisco clients and they want to view only stuff that's available in San Francisco. Um, and it, it actually makes a pretty good case for organizations that are wanting to offer specialized benefits. So we have certain members, we have, and maybe we have specialized industry information. We get reports, things like that. Well, we, we want to make that a member benefit. So we can have lots of public pages on our site talking about we have this great information. Here's a couple of freebies from the past two or three years. If you want the current information, sign up, go to this page, and then all that information fills in because the software knows they're logged in. Um, we can make it uh, inactive or pending, a couple other things. Um, but that's essentially the, the, the core of the software. And all these different settings and all this different content uh, is what kind of controls and flows how the content flows around your site. So uh, another question? Yes, uh, it is. It, it'll go ahead and um, delete that. Um, and actually, that, that brings up kind of a, a, another interesting point. One of the, the things we found specifically with files, and this is kind of a security thing, is that um, if someone knows the path to a file on your server, they can still get to it. So you may have a page that's totally locked down. This is, this is uh, board of, you know, executive board only. These are the board minutes. This discusses sensitive things. We can't have other people seeing this information. Well, with typical software, you upload that. And it's, you know, slash upload, slash something, slash something, something, dot XLS, dot PDF. Uh, with Tendency, all of our files are controlled by the same permissions that the pages are. Um, anytime you add a page, the, the permissions are automatically updated for the files that are attached to that. So if I upload a PDF to a page and I make that page private, that file gets made private. Um, now, what that really does is, is our files no longer have the file name in the URL. They just have IDs, so you'll see file 27, file 54. Um, if I go to these images here, and I'm gonna... so this is a, a URL to the, the image that I just showed. Um, it's number 2375. It's 40 by 40. I may say that's too big. Uh, one of the other things I can do since I'm logged in is I can dynamically resize this. So just by changing the URL, our image is going to get bigger. Um, this is how the software works in controlling on our templates. So when I showed in the home page area that I want certain areas to do that, um, we can also decide to crop or not to crop. Uh, and then this little 84 on the end is a quality setting. Um, one of the things we've seen to go along with big images is that when people upload big images, they are the same people that call and say their website is very slow. They've got these giant images everywhere. Um, we're able to use software to solve that problem. Um, we can be smart and we can tack on a quality setting. If I change this to four, uh, it'll totally degrade the image, but it'll load very quickly. Um, so we tend to use things in the 80 to 90 range. But it helps when a client uploads a, a 400, or not 400, a 4 meg um, or 5 meg image that we can change that and crop that out. But, but again, kind of, I guess to get back to your original point, if this file was private and I couldn't log in and I go to this URL, it blocks me. When to use which? Um, it, it totally is based on your organization. On the low end is WordPress. It has great user interface. Uh, I use it for my blog. I love it. Um, it's great for posts and pages. So if you have blog posts or pages, you can kind of hack it a little bit to do things like I did. I showed with my shared link or my favorites. Um, but you can't really run a, 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 an event registration site. It can be difficult to use WordPress on. Uh, if it's just content, it's great. But if it's other things, if people are logging in and adding, it gets difficult. Moving up the chain, I put tendency right kind of in the middle. We have a lot of software that's out of the box. All these modules, you don't have to initially configure anything. Uh, the stuff I've shown with your templates does need to be configured and set up. But we have some online documentation for those that are brave enough to copy paste code into their template you can use. Um, if not, of course, you can contact us, uh, and we're working with other people to, to help out with that as well. Um, there's my ugly image. Um, with Drupal, it's on the high end. Uh, we like to say at our company that Drupal is infinitely customizable, uh, and that's a pro and a con. Uh, 
Uh, it's a con because um, customization equals dollars. The more custom you want to get, the more expensive your site is going to be in time to make and in dollars to, to pay for and build. So um, if you need a job board and memberships and event registration, Tendency is a great fit. If you're a blogger and you want something that's going to scale and you maybe have some basic About Us pages, WordPress is great. Or if you're an organization like um, IKEA Houston, a uh, Drupal client of ours, and you want to sell products and you want to have lots of high traffic and you want to have these dynamic regions, they use the context module all the time um, where if I'm looking at a sofa, I may want to look at other living room furniture. I probably don't need to look at bedroom furniture and vice versa. Another question? Uh, that's actually a great question. Um, another part of, uh, and all these softwares come with different options for mobile. Um, two or three years ago, mobile was, a mobile site was either a different website that just had limited content on it, not very smart, or it had CSS that hid everything that you didn't want to show, which is also not smart because if your page has a bunch of big images, your phone's still loading all that stuff. It's just hidden, but it still has to load it, and it can still make the page run. So for WordPress, there's a couple of built-in templates that allow you to uh, show for mobiles, kind of specifically iPhone and Android. Um, for Drupal, there are the ability to kind of customize that information within your template. Uh, and Tendency actually does the same. Um, let me see if I've got enough time to fire up. So I use a Mac, and one of the things that I love is they have these developer options where I can tell the website that I'm on an iPhone. Oops, needed.com. So what this is going to do is, what we can do in our code is, is we like to get a little smarter where we say, we want to use uh, an if. If someone is on a mobile phone, we want to show them this type of content. We maybe want to show them a limited navigation. We want to show them the content of the page they went to because I probably more than anyone hate when I go to a website and I get redirected to their mobile home page and can't ever find what I was looking for because I'm searching for something on my phone. So here's ours. Um, our logo will pop up. You'll see we have the option to view the full site if we wish. Um, we get our address information because we figure you may be trying to find our office or give us a phone call. Very limited navigation. A um, couple of those contextual areas. Um, and then we'll get the, the page that pulls in. Um, I think this is the home page, so we don't have as, a lot of content on there. We, we took out most of the big images that we have because our pages it wasn't loading very fast. Um, but if I travel to, say, a uh, web marketing page, you'll see it'll load up. Same with the mobile design. It, it remains that throughout. Um, and, and again, this is stuff that you're going to want to plan out because it takes a little bit of configuration. We want to know that you know, we have this special footer that we only use on mobile sites. So we want to show that only when we're on a mobile site, which means we have to build that ahead of time so that we can include it. Uh, I think I've got time for one more question. If anyone has one more. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, WordPress can handle a kind of load like that. I have about 1,500 blog posts um, and probably a dozen or so pages. Um, but WordPress can stay like that. It's got some good back-end searching feature. Um, I showed with Tendency the, uh, how we search the stories. We search based on a tag for Texas. Um, so it pulls that information in as well. But um, any one of these softwares can scale uh, usually beyond that. If you're in the um, kind of 1,500 or 15,000 range, that's when you'd have to start asking questions like that. But uh, I think that's all the time I have. So thank you very much for attending, and I, I hope you learned something. Thanks. Thanks.